Good morning, Saturday morning, things to do in the garden. Yesterday I talked about the list of things I was going to do in this wet, 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 wet and rainy weekend. And I have been going around the garden uh, splitting bluebells. And so here's a little film about how we do it, why we do it, and what we do with them when we've split them. I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you a bit later. And in yesterday's clip, I was saying I was going to move some of these um, bluebells and settle them in the meadow. Now, be a little bit wary of digging up <laughs> plants in full flower. Bulbous plants, though, when they're going over, a bit like those tulips that we've just done, won't mind. Um, but it, again, it's really important to keep the leaves with the bulbs because they will absorb the goodness. Same principle as the tulips. They'll absorb the goodness and help the bulbs settle in for flowering again next year. So, handy border fork. And I'm just going to dig it. I've got some clumps because they're, they're moving across the bed here. So, I'm going to first of all dig up the random clumps because while I love them, I don't want them to overtake the whole bed. So, here we go. They're quite deep. And if you get under a clump, then the whole thing comes out in one go and I can then dig a slit trench and pop the whole thing in and that way my bulbs are coming with their own mycorrhiza, their own earth and they won't feel, the idea is to make it so that they don't feel as though they've been moved much, they don't want to notice that they've been moved. I'm a great believer in anthropomorphizing my plants and so the more I treat them like people with uh, good manners, kindness, a little consideration, the more they treat me well. It's a give and take situation. Anyway, here's a nice clump of bluebells. So I'm going to put them in my barrow and take them somewhere else. These are uh, the wild, British wild bluebell, Hyacinthoides non scripta, uh, in case you're interested. I won't make you watch me dig up a whole patch. <laughs> I'll turn you off for a little while and then I'll take you along to plant them in the ground. So go make a cup of tea or something. And, uh, and we'll have a bit more in a minute. So this is, this is what the, the um, bluebell bulbs look like when I've dug them up. So quite a lot of leaf. It's really important to keep the leaf with the bulbs, bulbs. Uh, when you plant them so that the leaf can absorb goodness and encourage the bulb to f settle in and uh, make a nice place for itself and flower again next year. On we go. Now, bluebells generally are found in a bluebell wood. That's why people talk about bluebell woods. Now, I haven't got a wood, uh, but I've got a couple of fruit trees outside the kitchen door. And this is a really meadowy patch that we keep fairly wild most of the time. It'll get mown later in the summer, but for the moment it's full of Telema grandiflora, cow parsley and all sorts of other goodies. So I think it's a good place to put more bluebells. I have already, I always do this, I kind of garden on the hoof. But look, there's one I moved earlier, very happy. Um, and it's done so nicely that actually now the rest of them have flowered I think I'm going to put some here so that next spring we've got a lovely carpet of bluebells coming ready steady go so here I go what I'm going to do is I've got quite a big spade so I'm going to make a slit trench any old wear really. I might hit the roots of the apple tree which is have to move around a bit. No, that's all right. Give it a good old squidge down, get as deep as you can. And I'm pushing the trench open with my spade so that I can then take a clump of bluebells. So 
know, look, they come with their earth. Nice clump of bluebells. The bulbs are still earthed up. So they won't really notice that they've been moved. And I make a, an opening by pulling the spade like this. Tuck them in. I've literally thrown them in. And I'm going to heal them in. Really well. Really get them into the thing. And then keeping my foot on the bulb so they don't pop out again. I'm pulling out. This is very, very wet clay, which is why ooh, you need a bit of welly for this. Um, I finish heating them in, and they don't look much, I'll show you. But they should settle in for the rest of the year, and hopefully flower again in the spring. So here are the bluebells just healed. This is healing in like this <laughs> healed in there was my spade um they tucked into the little what we call a slit trench and hopefully we'll get them next year right i'm going to do the rest uh, and i'll <laughs> i won't make you watch me plant the rest and then we'll go on to something else okay so so there grass is looking a bit trampled now but I've popped all those bluebells in. I've been followed around by Mrs. Robin. I'll see if I, I can, I'm useless at filming birds. The minute you hold the camera up, they'll spot you and run away. But she's following me around and any of the worms that I'm, my feet are trampling the ground a bit and bringing the worms up because they think it's rain and hammering the ground with a spade or a fork makes the worms think it's rain, so she's really feasting behind me, which is great. Um, because I know that she's got a nest full of babies on my daughter's windowsill, which is being overwhelmed by ivy. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> you can live wild, the house might fall down, but at least the robins will live. Anyway, um, hopefully next year this will be a lovely patch with more bluebells. It will take a year or two to establish, you know, they don't, there's no such thing as an instant garden. And for those of you who are doing No Mow May, for example, you may be feeling a bit disappointed uh, as people like me show what's essentially a wild area, so as if it's instant. But actually, I've been working on this for 17 years and um, it is a little haven of heaven. It is full of dock, many different kinds of thistle. Uh, but when we came here, it was a green desert. There was nothing here much, except for some really hefty daps every now and again. Um, so we've really encouraged the wild in. And if you are thinking of letting some of your grass go a little bit wild, then it's really worth tucking a few things. Now there's some sparrows. <laughs> it's worth tucking a few things in as you think of it through the year. Don't mow too tightly allow things to seed into the lawn and then next spring you might find it a bit more you know like my friend katie who's going to have tulips in her long grass and we're going to have bluebells in our long grass it all takes a little bit of planning there is no such thing as long-term instant gardening no such thing there is the trust flower show which is an example of what you could achieve over many years in your domestic situation <laughs> Sorry to disappoint if you were hoping. But you know, you make a garden, a go you don't make a garden for now, you make a garden for generations to come. Somebody very kindly planted this Blenheim orange apple tree, probably two, three generations ago. I don't know how old it is. And it's certainly provided our children with an early climbing frame. When they were tiny, we'd have a rug on the grass here and they'd just roll around on the grass. And now I think the only people who really notice it are Fabrizio and I, and it gives us pleasure, I cannot tell you. So somebody kindly planted this tree, safely knowing that they would never ever see it in its glory. And that is what gardening's about. So these bluebells, I hope, will settle in, and two or three generations down the line, this might be a small wood, and, or a bigger orchard, and there might be a swathe of bluebells which look as though they've been here forever. Anyway, enough of the lecturing. <laughs> Onwards and upwards. We've got 
uh, what have we got? We've got cowslips to split. Let's get on. Things to do, people to see, parties to go to. Yes, yes, onwards and upwards. And there we are, a little project for the weekend, if you like. Um, I have done similar with tulips and similar again with cowslips. And I may make another little film, but for the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this one, uh, including my lecturing bit. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, if you enjoy these films, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button. And then you'll be told every time we uh, add a little clip. Anyway, have a lovely weekend and I'll see you later. Bye.